Hello, my name is Lindsay Bartz. I am the founder of the Lady Book Foundation. I'm an organizational consultant for Fulton County Hope, and I teach yoga in the area. Today, I'm going to be sharing you a story called No Matter What, A Fair Foster Care Tale. Kind of a mouthful to say. And to me, this story talks a lot about the importance of social connection. But I'll notice if you'll, I wonder if you'll notice the same thing. It starts with our friend, Josh and Grace. One day, Grace was soaring over the river when he spotted a young squirrel crying. Grace glided down. What are you doing out here all alone, Josh? She asked. Let's find you a family, shall we? I notice in this story that Josh is sad and I know that when I'm sad, I sometimes cry as well. And I know what that feels like to be sad. She started with the pelicans. They smelled too fishy. Then to the porcupines. They were too prickly. Next to the kangaroos. They were too hoppy. He's a squirrel, said Mr. Kangaroo. He needs to learn about trees and climbing. So Grace swooshed him over to the leopards. I notice in right here that Josh is feeling, it looks to me really sad again. And I'm wondering if since he doesn't have any friends here, he might feel lonely. And I know what that's like to feel lonely when you feel like no one likes you or that you're all by yourself. It's a bad feeling. At night, the leopards would go looking for food in the dark. Josh was afraid of the dark. Ha ha, look, he's a scaredy cat, taunted one young leopard. More like a scaredy squirrel, said another. Nobody is ever going to want me, thought Josh. Have you ever felt like that? I have. Feels pretty lonely. When it was time to go to bed, Josh followed the leopards up their tree, but on the way, he spotted a small squirrel-sized hole, a place where he could be alone. Right then and there, he decided, I'll crack them before they crack me. When the leopards woke up, they were furious. Who ruined our coats, they roared. Oh, that? I was just playing a little game of connect the dots. That's it. I'm sorry, but you cannot live here, Mrs. Leopard said. Five days to crack the leopards. Josh was determined to spend even less time with the next family. Grace took Josh from the bats to the monkeys and from the otters to the snakes. Josh tried to break his record of five days, but it didn't make him feel any better. Have you ever done something you thought would make you feel good and then it just made you feel bad? I've done that before. It feels pretty bad. Grace knew about the trouble Josh was causing and she had an idea. Josh, she said, I have just the family for you. Not interested, said Josh. And with that, Grace picked him up and flew him toward the Great Falls. Josh, this is Rodney and Christine. Elephant, Josh said. And this is Josh. Excuse me, Grace said. And this is Josh. Nice to meet you, Josh, Rodney said. He stuck out his trunk. Weird, am I shaking your hand or your nose, Josh asked. Both, chuckled Rodney. Oh, hey, what do you get when elephant sneezes? You get out of the way. Lame, Josh said, trying to hide his laughter. Before Grace left, she turned to Josh. Please give them a chance. 
<laughs> Have you ever had a hard time giving someone a chance? So he tied their nail, their tails in a knot and put flamingos in their front yard and brought a skunk inside their house. But elephants are very large and very patient. Can you think of someone that is just as patient as these elephants? They're not even getting mad at him. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> That's his little skunk. Every night when they tucked Josh in, they would say, Good night, Josh. We're glad you're here with us today. And we're glad you'll be here with us be here with us tomorrow. Tomorrow. Ugh. That was the part that messed up Josh's plan. Luckily, Josh had an idea he knew would crack their tough hide and crack them. The next morning, Josh went to the clearing near the river. It was time for Operation Crash. They will make, they will make, this will make them get rid of me for sure. So I'm going to scare the rhino and then the rhino is going to push over the tree and then the tree is going to fall into the water and then that's going to cause a huge wave all over the elephants and then I'm free. Let's see if this plan works. But Rhino was way faster than Josh had ever thought. Ah, ah, into the water. Josh was not a good swimmer. Worst of all, the river was rushing towards the Great Falls. Remember that place from earlier? It's Josh, cried Christine. Everyone to the river, bellowed Rodney. We have to get him before he goes over the falls. Help! Help! The river rushed and gushed around Rodney, but his massive legs were anchored firmly as the lifeline of animals held strong. Look at all of them. They're reaching towards him. They got him with his trunk. Rodney pulled Josh from the river and lifted him toward Christine. Josh didn't know what to say. Do you know what squirrels and elephants have in common? Asked Rodney. What? Asked Josh. We both have excellent memories. Rodney said. So here's something I want you to remember. No matter what you do, we love you and we're not going anywhere. At that moment, Josh knew that someone would always be there no matter what, a real family. And on this page, I noticed that he's happy, but he's only happy when he's connected with the elephants in his family. So that, to me, is why I feel like the story is about social connection. But maybe you think it's about kindness or gratitude. All of them are really good for us. So I hope you enjoyed the story.